Hi, Rod Fleming in the sunny Philippines here. And we still haven't got a proper studio set up, so you're just going to have to accept that I'm going to be a bit sweaty. Sorry. I can't run the aircon here. We'll work out over the next few days to get something better for you. Anyway, I want to talk today a little bit about J.K. Rowling and her book, published under the name of Robert Galbraith. Now, I did read some of this book. I dipped into it because you can read the first 100 pages, I think it is, first 10 chapters on Amazon. And yeah, well, I skimmed it, so don't pick me up too much on it. Is it transphobic? Yeah, it is, I'm afraid. Now, I have to say, and I want to make this very clear, that I do not believe in cancel culture at all. I think you have to judge the art and not the artist. And fair enough, I don't agree with J.K. Rowling's position on this at all. And it's a difficult position to be in because she's an artist, you know, um, she's a writer. Right, artists are just filters. They kind of filter what's around them and then regurgitate it. That's what every artist does. That's what we all do. I mean, I remember being at college and the so-called humanities people saying, oh, you oh no, you can't describe causality. Well, actually you can. There's no art without causality. Without causation, there's no art. Without things going on in the world around the artist, there's no art. There's nothing for them to make art out of. And so you have to look at what J.K. Rowling is saying and, and, and try to find out why she's got the position she has. Now, I'll say again, I don't believe in cancel culture. I, I've always believed that you judge the art, not the artist. I mean, if you think James Joyce, for example, was a thoroughly reprehensible man. He was not a nice person. Still was one of the great writers of the 20th century. Um, the same could be said of someone like Peter Sellers. Peter Sellers was a notoriously awful man. He was terrible. He beat his wife. He was, he was a terrible man. And yet he was a comic genius. And his work stands alone as comic genius. And there's no way around that. The work is not the artist. The artist is separate from the work. And you have to judge the art. So I think there are two questions here. Is J.K. Rowling herself transphobic? And the answer to that one is, I think, yes, she is. And is the work... Well, it is absolutely true that she limits the mentions of the, the, the killer who dresses as a woman to, to, to commit murder to uh, certainly only one mention that I saw. But you're kind of primed for it. You're brought up towards it with lots of other little trails and other little mentions such that when it is actually said and finally stated what's going on here, that you're not at all surprised. I mean, that's what you're expecting to happen. And I have to say that, yeah, that's what artists do. That's what writers do. But you can't say it's not leading the audience in a particular way. And that particular way is towards transphobia. Now, was that deliberate? Or was that just something that comes out? Because it's a really big question with artists. You don't really know. It's certainly not always obvious. Whether what is coming out in an artist's work is sort of the, the, the subconscious just coming out through the art, or whether it's a, you know, a deliberate constructed message that's going forward. And I, I personally think, having read what I have done, which I dipped in. I mean, I'm not going to waste my time reading this stuff because I've got plenty of things to do. And, and to be honest with you, that kind of fiction, you know, it desperately needs, desperately needs a, a massive edit. It's 900 pages long. It probably should be about 450, to be honest with you. But people like these airport novels so they can spend a 12 hour flight reading the damn thing. You know, why don't you just read a serious book? You know, you know <laughs> much thinner one, it weighs a lot less, take you just as long to read and you'll actually learn something. But, you know, apparently people don't like that. Anyway, is it just something that's coming out that's like her past, her subconscious, coming out in the work? Or is it deliberate? And my own view, and it's totally personal, is that J.K. Rowling is not actually a good enough writer to do something like that deliberately and make it look like it was accidental. I just don't think she's good enough. You know, I have read a substantial amount of her work. I read the Harry Potter series. I've read various others. I read one of the Galbraith books. <laughs> you know, this is not a woman who thinks deeply. It's a very superficial person. Now, we know that she had, as she's admitted, this is in public record, so there's no risk in saying so, that she had uh, some sort of abusive relationship in her 20s. And this does seem to have scarred her. Now, we don't know 
because she's never discussed this, whether the person who it was apparently her husband, who, who caused her this harm, was actually himself transvestite. I mean, that is entirely possible. It might well have been that there was this conflation of things going on. And of course, you know, that would come out in your work. You couldn't really, it's kind of difficult to, to, to get around that. And as I said, she's not, she's not a skilled enough writer to be able to, to invent that sort of thing and make it look accidental. She just isn't, you know, I mean, who could? Somebody like Lawrence Durrell could have, yes. Uh, you know, there's lots of writers who could, but not her. She just isn't good enough. And so she's in a Blyton level. So I think that you have to understand that this is a woman who's probably suffering from at least a degree of post-traumatic stress disorder. And this has conditioned her views of men generally. And perhaps we might say particularly men who are gender non-conforming or cross-dressing in specific ways. I mean, she said, I saw um, an email she sent, I believe, to Samantha Lux, a YouTuber, in which she said, you know, if you want to, if you were being, uh, if you were being persecuted, I, I would march beside you, I would do this, I would do that. That's just virtue signaling. That's like saying, oh, some of my friends are black. It just doesn't mean anything, you know, it just doesn't. <laughs> it's just the sort of thing people say to try to absolve themselves of blame, you know. And so I don't think I would be taking that kind of thing too seriously. What do I think in the end then? Well, I'm obviously reluctant to encourage transphobia, but at the same time, I can't see that it's reasonable to, to pillory or cancel this woman because she's maybe inadvertently regurgitating things or prejudice that she de developed many years ago. As I say, this, this is not... She's not a subtle writer. She just isn't. She's not deep. She doesn't have depth. She doesn't have the technical skills to, 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 to carry off, you know, a pretense like that. She just doesn't have it. So you have to assume that she's just being honest and letting her inner voice speak. And of course, your inner voice as a writer, it's, it's as any kind of artist, but particularly as a writer, it's, you know, you've got to be careful with it because it can say things that you don't really want to say. You might mean them, <laughs> you might well mean them, but, but you might not actually want that to come out in public. And avoiding that does actually require significant skill on the part of the writer. And I'm afraid it's, you know, she doesn't have... <sighs> you know, Self-criticism is a, a, is a funny thing. Artistic ability to criti criticise your own work, it's a funny thing because in some ways it can be very negative, it can kind of block you. But in other ways, it, it's really necessary, you have to be able to do it. And my view is that she doesn't really have that skill, she just plowters on, you know, keeps going, and like 900 pages of this stuff. And throughout it, yes, there is this recurring theme of her, let's just say suspicion of men who are dressed as women. And whether that's a suspicion of all men, or suspicion specifically of uh, transvestite men. I mean, I could only read the first chapters, 10 chapters, and I only skimmed them. I, I did not read them in depth. It doesn't seem to be clear from the book. I don't know. Um, my own view, I, I wouldn't bother buying it. There's, there's loads more uh, gripping, exciting, um, tight, and considered books out there that, won't, that don't have these kind of sloppy errors sort of inherent to them. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that for now. I might come back to it. See you later.